In this video, we are going to take a pretty standard testing approach in high school or middle school, and we are going to transform this approach so that the tests that students are taking really drive learning forward. In a typical high school or middle school classroom, the testing looks something like this. Students go through different units over the course of the class, and uh, at the end of each unit, they take a unit test. Now, this unit test covers all the material that students have learned in that specific unit, and probably happens about once every three or four weeks. And usually these tests are fairly high stakes. That is, they count for a relatively large percentage of the student's grade. Students generally know what's going to be on the test, and so they study for these unit tests beforehand. Students also usually don't get another chance to review the unit, at least in a test-taking scenario, say until the midterm or the final, final exam. To make tests really effective for learning and to take advantage of the testing effect, we're going to have to flip these ideas on their heads. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have more tests. We're going to sprinkle tests everywhere, right? Students are going to be taking tests at least once a week, probably several times a week, and actually I don't think it's even a bad thing if they're taking tests every day or almost every day. But the formatting of these tests is going to be quite different than the unit tests. First of all, the unit test is big. Our tests are going to be small. They're going to be 10 to 15 minute affairs. They're not going to take the whole class time. Unit tests are high stakes, or at least medium stakes. Our tests, with so many tests that we have, our tests are going to be low stakes. So any given test is not going to count for much towards the student's grade. So if students are motivated uh, to take these tests seriously by getting a grade, you want to make the stakes high enough that they are motivated to do well, but you know, not so high that they have some kind of, you know, crippling anxiety about this. Uh, generally speaking, the anxiety is not great for learning. Unit tests cover only the previous unit's material, but our tests are going to kind of be a mishmash of different material, some more recent material, probably about 50% of the test might be more recent material, and then another 50% of the test might be made up of uh, questions from previous units, or maybe questions that integrate material from a couple of different units. This takes advantage of two important effects, spacing and interleaving. So students aren't going to forget the material in unit two at the end of the year, because there are going to be occasional questions about that material. This kind of testing approach also enables students to see interrelationships between topics and different ideas in the class, which is really important for long-term learning. The other thing is that students don't necessarily know exactly what's going to be on each test. So students aren't studying for our little tiny tests. They are just coming in fresh and being tested on the material that hopefully they've been learning and integrating in the class and through their homework assignments and, and the like. Now, the other thing about our small test is that we need to include at least some high-level questions. And what I mean by high-level questions are things like uh, asking students to apply their knowledge in an innovative way, or maybe integrate a couple of different ideas uh, in, the, in the class to a new kind of problem. These kinds of questions help build knowledge structures in the student's head. Ironically, the high-level questions also help students learn some of the more low-level questions, you know, the basic facts, the basic concepts, that kind of thing. When a group of researchers and a social studies teacher collaborated on making this kind of frequent, low-stakes testing approach a reality in the teacher's classroom, there were a couple of interesting findings. The class that used the frequent, low-stakes testing approach outperformed the class that used the more traditional approach. That just kind of falls in line with what I've already said. But the other interesting finding here is that student anxiety about testing didn't increase. It actually went down in the frequent low stakes testing group. Testing anxiety isn't really about the tests, it's actually about the stakes that we attach to the test. A test that has very high stakes and you can only take once well, that's going to create a lot of anxiety. When tests become 
a habit and you end up taking lots of low stakes tests, your anxiety about testing or about the idea of tests or quizzes goes down. You also have the opportunity to take another crack at the material, even if you say screw up a couple of times. It's kind of like if you make a bad YouTube video, not that I've ever done that before, but if you make a bad YouTube video, then you can take another crack at it and make a second YouTube video or even a third YouTube video to keep improving your skills over time. A final little tidbit or little side benefit from this kind of testing approach is that it gives you more actionable information. If you're the teacher, when you're getting a little bit of information about your students over time, it lets you adjust your instruction and kind of see what's happening in your kids and how they're thinking and how they're performing and what the major gaps are. When you only have those major tests, you can go on teaching in your classroom and think, oh, well, yeah, I think my students are getting it. And then you get those tests back and you're like, Man, I can't believe that this group of students didn't get it. Um, but by that time, you've already spent, you know, three to four weeks on this topic, on this major topic. And then you've got to spend even more time on the next topic because otherwise you're going to get behind and yeah, it's just, it's a mess. If you want to know more about the testing effect and how to use tests to facilitate learning and formative assessment and all these things, let me know in the comments and I can make more videos going into more depth on this kind of strategy. That's all I have for today and I will see you next time.